In 11 days, the probably most unique biathlon season ever will kick off in Finland. And we're really grateful that Christian Winkler, the communications director of the International Biathlon Union, nevertheless took the time right now to answer some of our most pressing questions. Christian, you just finished the IBU Congress this weekend. For the first time ever, as far as I know, it took place online. How was that new format received and was it comparable to an ordinary Congress in terms of what you could achieve? Um, yeah, thank you, uh, Victoria, also for giving me the opportunity uh, to speak to you today and to address uh, the members of the Forum Nordicum. Um, yeah, you've mentioned it, it's uh, interesting times and nothing goes ahead as, as usual and there's a lot of flexibility required when it comes to planning, not only for the sports, but also for us as a federation um, around things like the Congress. Um, so yes, you're right, it was for the first time that we had a virtual Congress. Um, it was the first time ever and I would say in a nutshell, the experience was very positive. Um, of course, we've put a lot of effort in, in planning it right. We held preparation sessions with our national federations about what, uh, what would happen at the Congress, what the procedure is, how the voting works, because you know we, we also awarded the World Championships in 24 and 25, so there was voting required um, amongst other items. And so um, we did preparation sessions with every national federations clustered by the regions. And um, I think so when it came to the Congress, everyone was well prepared, everyone knew what to expect. And uh, the feedback we have gotten from our members is that it was a positive experience. Um, of course, um, a virtual session can never um, make up for the for the social part that is clearly missing in our times, not just at this Congress, but in, in general. Um, things are changing every day right now, sometimes even every hour. And I know that you made big changes to the season calendar. We already know that Hochfilzen, Antholz, Oberhof, they all will have no spectators at their events. Do you have any news on Kontiolachti? Because 11 days from now, we will start the season there. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Um, for, for Hochfilzen, Oberhof and Antholz, it's already been decided that there will be no spectators, which uh, surely is an exceptional situation. And uh, we had it already towards the end of last season in, in Nove Mesto and in Kontiolachti. Um, it certainly, is some, certainly something's missing when there are no spectators, especially in a sports like biathlon. But um, to answer your question in Kontiolati, at the moment it looks like there could be spectators. Um, but as you say, things are changing by the day, by the hour sometimes, and it all depends on what the situation is in, in Northern Karelia and, and the region and um, what the authorities will say in the end. Um, having spectators or not is not a decision that comes from the IBU, it comes from the authorities in cooperation with the organizing committee. So I guess also for the season highlight, the World Championships in Pokayuka, you have no news so far or do you know at least when they will decide it? Um, no, I'm sorry, I cannot answer this. Um, what I know is that they haven't decided it yet or made, have not made a final call on it. Of course, um, I guess they, they want to keep it open as long as they can to to have the possibility to, to have fans there on the Pokoliuka. But um, again, uh, this really depends on the situation in Slovenia, maybe a couple of uh, weeks before the the World Championship would take place and then we need to see what the authorities say and, and what the, the pandemic situation is there. Well, you already well, yeah. said that the World Cup without spectators, of course, is not ideal, but it also means for organizers a huge cut in their budget and everything they're planning. I know some organizers are hosting twice, others are hosting not at all. How can or will the IBU um, support them? Yeah, I think um, the budget this season really is, is uh, something peculiar or something special and, and we had to rework um, a lot uh, what we have planned. Um, in, in terms of helping the organizers, we, we have uh, made a couple of decisions which, which are important. First of all, everyone gets um, the normal uh, OC organizing committee contribution, even if they had to hand back the event. So that means like Rupolding, who will, will not have a, a World Cup this season, they get 
the normal uh, contribution which they always get when they hold the event. That's the first thing. Then, of course, we Oberhof, for example, who will have two events, they get um, the normal contribution twice for the event and on top an extra contribution um, for holding two events uh, under the corona situation. Um, and in the case of Oberhof, for example, uh, this makes up to, to almost, almost or close to half a million euros. It's so great that you're uh, supporting the organizers, um, but also our target group here is the media side. So for me personally and for all of us from the Forum Nordicum, it's really interesting how the organizers will tackle the media situation. I guess there will be a limited capacity, but also interesting for you from the IBU side is how is the demand from the international media? I guess there might be less regarding all the travel restrictions and also the fear. Can you tell us what's the update there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, in, in terms of media accreditation, we had to limit um, access for the media in, in terms of numbers and also in terms of what they can do at the venue. So for Hochfilzen and Contiolati, we will have uh, 30 media accredited, not including broadcasters. Broadcasters is, is a different uh, type. But in our event concept, which is quite strict and which tries to separate uh, the core group, the athletes, and the officials who, who are essential for the for the competitions, uh, the media are in a different group and thus they will have less access than normal. So there will be the only possibility to speak to the athletes will be in the mixed zone. There's no press conference. We also advise our national federations not to have one on one contacts with the media, but to go digital where possible or to to be outside doing interviews with distance, uh, with mouth uh, protect, uh, face protection with um yeah not longer than 15 minutes and all this so um to, to make it short um it, it the access is restricted this year there's less places available 30 for consulati and hofils and, and yes the demand has also been um lower than in, in normal seasons uh, so we can clearly see that travel restrictions plus of course um, our information which went out to the media to tell them hey there is not so much possible this season certainly have led to a to a lower interest but Saying this at the same time, we, we have given a lot of thought of how we can help the media who are not on site this year. And um, of course, one help is to to make the competitions possible and to make sure there's a broadcast of the competitions. I think with do, these two things, at least there is a biathlon season and media have something to report about. But nevertheless, also, we have uh, created a database where journalists can get pictures. So those who rely on pictures, um, there will be um, free for, for, for uh, editorial purposes, free pictures available. We will have an opportunity to ask questions uh, at the press conference and we will also take over some mixed zone work, um, which the journalists usually do in the mixed zone. They can send us uh, their questions and we will try to get that to them uh, via WhatsApp, uh, voice pop as, as soon as possible, of course. We will not be able to accommodate all the requests we receive, but we are trying to help those who would usually be there and, and will not be on site. And this is especially important. Um, I'd like to point this out here for the special interest publications. I mean, you know, we have a lot of big um, newspapers, big agencies following us and and they will probably send someone to our events. But in, in many countries, biathlon has become such a popular sport because there's a smaller uh, special interest publications and we really uh, want to do our best to, to help them out this season because they will be most affected by, by the restrictions in place. So you just said um, that media can actually pose questions at the press conference. Does that mean like, you work at the digital solution like maybe Zoom where me media can just join in, raise their hand and then ask the question to the athlete? Yeah, um, <laughs> we, we have thought about this a lot. And, and to be honest, in the beginning, we will start with a bit more uh, conservative setup because we want everything to get used to it and to to um, also understand how the things work and what the flow is. So what we will do, um, we will have an email address open for the journalists and during the race and after the race, they can send their question to us and we will then um, ask those questions which we will see, which we see come more often or which um, might have a special interest or a good observation of the race and might be interesting for a general public. So that is, that is what we offer in the beginning. So it's not a direct feedback mechanism because we also cannot um, go our press conference or make them drag on forever. So we need to curate it a little bit. 
but uh, maybe if we see this working well and get a bit of a feel of how the setup works, maybe we open it up for a bit more direct interaction uh, during the season. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, this kind of virtual solution was in a way forced on you, so uh, that kind of innovation probably wasn't planned for, but this feeling might be sub subjective, but as a woman I saw how many ideas you tackled within the last two years, like gender equality, you have an integrity code, now a sustainability strategy, and now even the ban on fluorine vex. You seem to tackle more issues and work more transparently, if I dare, dare say so, in the last two years than in the entire history of the IBU. Where does this drive, this new drive come from? Thank you very much. Um, it's quite uh, reassuring when, when journalists come back with such an ob observation. But um, definitely, we have tried to tackle a lot of uh, things, um, I would say, outside just the sports. Yeah, I, I think that the sport uh, at IBU and, and Biathlon has always been in good shape and, and it's an exciting uh, competition format and a lot of things have been done right in the past. So what what we could do once, um, I mean, when, when you look at how do institutions change, it's often external shocks and for the International Biathlon Union certainly um, the spring and summer of 2018 was an external shock um, with, with criminal investigations against the former officials. And I think this moment was um, a moment for change and, and the IBU embraced that change and, and took the right steps. And this uh, has a lot to do with the leadership, um, new president, new executive board, new secretary general. I think what, what we have to say is that at the headquarters at IBU, there was a huge change. We have new um, heads of departments, new secretary general. And so a lot of things became important. And, and I would also admit that the IBU has been late to some of these topics when it came to gender equality, sustainability. So we have worked really hard to make up for that. And, and now we have um, a gender equality uh, commission. We have a concept there. We hold conferences on the issue. Um, because you can say on the field of play, biathlon is very gender equal. But when you look behind that, coaches, um, and you know, officials and all this, is, it's very male dominated. And we are certainly working on getting capable um, individuals of both or all genders um, to, to, to work in the sport of biathlon beyond their athletes career. And then we, we have um, a sustainability policy now in place, which aims to make our sports carbon neutral um, by 2030, which, which is really a huge goal and, and which will be very demanding from all stakeholders. And, and you know, it, it starts with the events. It, it, it doesn't end with travel and all this. So, um, Lots of changes to come and the implementation of this will be challenging. But um, as you said, we, we want to be a leader in, in these things when it because we did a depend <laughs> on, on a working environment and uh, we won't need to protect our winters. So um, it's, it's natural for us to join this course. And yes, I, uh, thank you very much for your observation. And I think we are, we are really committed to doing our best in these areas. Well, honestly, it's not a question, but I thank you because when I started with 18 as a female in um, biathlon, I really didn't like it that much. So thank you again, Christian, and tell the whole headquarters. I really enjoy what the IBU is doing right now. But apart from me, let's get to our final question. Um, I want to dare have a further outlook into 2022. Usually we, and by we, I mean athletes, officials, media, even fans, everyone involved has the possibility to enjoy test events at the upcoming Olympic host cities. Right now, I see Beijing is still in your calendar, but is there a plan B in case the whole circuit is not allowed or it's impossible to manage to travel to China? What is the plan B here uh, in regards to the Olympic test events? Mm -hmm. Um, yes, uh, th this is a very good topic. The, what we can say, the, the IOC and uh, Beijing 2022, together with uh, all the winter sports federations, have decided to cancel the, the test events in, in Beijing, the international test events. So, so all these international um, events that were planned for the first um, quarter of or Q1 of, of 2021, they have been cancelled. And instead, 
there will be um, an adapted sports testing program, which then means it's, it's going to be other events, maybe national events in our case, um, where we test the venue. And I mean, for us, the venue, we have been quite involved in building the venue and making sure it works according to the standards we need. But it's all also about testing the referees, testing the people who are involved in the event. So this is what we will make sure within the next year. And um, for our calendar, what does it mean for the last trimester after the World Championships in Pokoyuka? Of course, we will not go to Beijing. And we are currently working with uh, our organizing committees and national federations uh, to find a solution for this uh, last trimester of the upcoming season. And uh, I can say we will certainly announce something before um, our season kicks off so that everyone knows what the full schedule will, will look like. And uh, you can assume it's going to be under the same principles in which we have already adapted our uh, competition calendar for this season. So less travel and making sure that we protect the health, um, health of everyone involved. Well, it seems like in every full Nordicum we get totally new news. Thank you, Christian. We didn't know that so far because I just looked on your website and Beijing was still in there. So thank you so much for answering our questions and really stay healthy, everyone. And good luck with the season kickoff in 11 days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, stay healthy as well.